Welcome back to Worth and Weekly News. This week, 1.89 dev blogs are in full swing, and we got the official announcement for World War Mode, which is bound to start in about a day or so. So hit that subscribe button. Let's first get into these dev blogs. The first dev blog actually came out today on Sunday, which is unusual, was for the very anticipated Leclerc, a new French top tier MBT with a stabilizer. The main cannon is 120 millimeters, but is not a Rheinmetall L44, but a Jant L52, which ended the dev blog states that it can shoot projectiles at a higher velocity and is coupled with an auto letter that has a five second reload. In exchange for the auto letter, there's only three crew members. However, the armor should make up for it being 600 to 700 millimeters against kinetic and 1200 against chemical. Although like all MBTs, that's most likely only at its strongest points. The sides are probably made of cardboard. The top speed of the tank is 71 kilometers hour on paved roads and can hit up to 38 on reverse. No mention of how fast it goes off paved roads. However, the Wikipedia page states that it can go 55 kilometers an hour on all terrain. My final verdict for this tank is, is essentially a type 90 with better armor perhaps if this has a proper repair cost it could propel france into being competitive again especially now since they have helicopters and bullpups on their top tier jet the next newest talked about tank dead blog was for the bradley adats it's a bradley with eight mouse guarded anti-air missiles with proximity fuses and a 25 millimeter autocannon now the autocannon that's small fry but the anti-air missiles can penetrate up to 900 millimeters of roll of Majin's armor. So there's a good chance that you're looking at another Tunguska. Now, the Tunguska has already done a great deal of, I guess you could say, damage to the game, as it seems to murder just about anything. Now, I haven't actually seen it or taken it into the battle much, but I've been shot down by it, so I can't say on how prevalent those claims are, but all the complaints that those people have, I guarantee you they will also have for this vehicle. I generally have the feeling that it's just going to contribute to the mess that top tier currently is. Most likely going to stay at 10.0, just like the Claire is also probably just going to stay at 10.0, making 9.0 an absolute nightmare. But really really bugs me though is that it's not an American vehicle. Well, it technically is. It's a Bradley with, I think, American missile system on top of it. But it was developed in Switzerland and used by Canada. I don't know, Gaijin seems to think that Canada is the 51st state. I kind of agree with them. It should be the 51st state. Maybe 52nd, because, you know, Puerto Rico is almost there. The U.S. did evaluate it and order some, but they canceled them later. And a U.S. company was involved with its creation. So I'm really just nitpicking, but there was other missile-guided systems that Gaijin could have added. And and also, Thailand used these vehicles. And during the Second World War, Thailand was an ally of Japan. So perhaps one of these could land their way into the Japanese tree? They needed a guided missile system, they don't have any. The final tank dev blog is for the 9P149 Strum S which is kind of like a Russian version of the Rakington Jagdpanzer, being very low to the ground and armed only with ATGMs. However, this gets two different variants of ATGMs, so I hope you like grinding. One with 560mm penetration, one with 800mm penetration. The only other major difference this has than the Rakington Jagdpanzer is that it only has 14mm of armor, unlike the 50 on the front of the Rakington Jagdpanzer, which means that it's going to be extremely vulnerable to aircraft. The only aircraft dev blog was for the F-86K Sabre Dog. This particular dev blog was for one in the French tree. However, the Sabre Dog saw use all over the globe. Italy built their own Sabre Dogs and shared them with Germany and France. Japan, China, and Yugoslavia used the D variant. And of course, America designed the dang thing. Now, reading from the dev blog, I get the feeling that we're only going to see it in the French tree. Although I'm pretty sure even if that's the case, we'll see it in other trees later on in life. Generally, the plane is just your typical subsonic fighter. It looks a lot like a Sabre, but it's not a Sabre. It has two air-to-air -air missiles, four 20mm M24A1 cannons. A great deal of people were rather disappointed that France is getting a US jet instead of something that they've designed themselves. But I'm pretty sure this jet is going to be going into multiple trees, not just the French one, so it's kind of a killing two stones with one bird type of deal. What I find most entertaining about the introduction of this jet is a day prior, a member of my Discord asked me if we were to see a F-86D or K variant anytime soon, and I replied with, nope, a big doubt. The first Japanese vessel dev blog was for the number 4 type CH-8 sub chaser. At first glance, this thing looks like trash, and in fact, the dev blog itself 
itself kind of plays up the prior boat number 13 type sub chaser much more and they keep on trying to play by that the depth charges are actually going to do something and they're going to be a useful item though i doubt anyone's actually ever used them besides at a very rare chances or attempting to do it for the novelty however if the prior boat armed with a 80 millimeter cannon which is probably just a 76 does not have the dual 40s like this boat does then there's an obvious reason why this one would be further in the tree. Having two 40s is much more effective than a 76 millimeter cannon. The next vessel to come was for the Kuma class light cruiser. A very old ship armed with 740 millimeter cannons, eight torpedo tubes, and only two 80 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. However, on the bright side, apparently it is very maneuverable and can reach up to 36 knots. Besides that, it's got some pretty standard armor. There's a bizarre note in the dev blog near the end where it states, therefore, Kuma captains will always have to remain vigilant and aware of their surroundings while taking advantage of the ship's mobility and perform quick defensive maneuvers in order to avoid enemy fire, both the kind from above and below the waves. Now, many people had been theorizing this is a hint towards submarines. However, I feel it is just talking about torpedoes. Now, that is all the devlogs, although there's still information to get from these devlogs, as people are always asking many questions in the comments. So while we're on the topic of submarines, let's first go over some comments that were happening in the Russian devlogs. First one I'd bring attention to is somebody asking, and they really think that death charge launchers in game without subs are cool, dot dot dot. And the reply was, maybe there's a hidden message in the text. Nah, that's nonsense. There was another one of sub chasers in game without subs. That's weird. So it's about time to implement subs. Reply was, who knows, maybe this CH8 dev blog is a hint, winky face. A user commented, I want subs. Somebody replied to that saying, the mod hinted at them twice in a previous dev blog. And then a moderator commented, shush. This is some pretty interesting evidence because also the moderators have been hinting at the Leclerc for quite some time in a similar fashion, making jokes about it and the like. On the F-86K dev blog, it was asked, the model looks good, but still waiting for a World War II vehicle that ain't a boat ship. And Coke Spray, the moderator, replied with, stay tuned, always more to come. And on the Leclerc dev blog, it was asked, is Britain getting any new ground vehicles in this update? And Sim1080p replied with, yes. My assumption is this is going to be some sort of guided missile spag to go along with the edats. But who knows, maybe we'll finally get the bishop. On the week prior, on the announcement of the Japanese fleet, if you were to change the language to Polish, the first paragraph would make it mention of the light cruiser Agano and the destroyer Yugumo. Now the Yugumo is beyond confirmed as it already has a dev blog for the premium variant and the base variant was part of the closed beta tests. So putting the light cruiser Agano right next to it implies that we definitely are going to get the Agano, which was armed with six 152mm cannons, a pretty alright anti-air armament, some torpedoes, and had about 60 millimeters of armor. This thing is about on the same level as some of the later German light cruisers. So next on the list of things to talk about is World War Mode was finally announced after what has been like seven years of development. I'm pretty sure for the most of those years it was just a sticky note pinned to a cork board. The initial announcement was only a video, a very flashy trailer, but it's a trailer never really representative of the final product. But later on a Q&A going into much more detail exactly how the game was going to be carried out was posted. However, the answers were very long-winded and commonly did not hold anything interesting. There is one, however, that stood out a bit. It sounds ambitious and interesting, but how will the mode be developed in the future? The answer was, obviously, we will add new scenarios and awards, implementing even more missions, and following your feedback and suggestions on the World War mode experience very closely. In the future, naval forces may also be involved in World War mode, and there may be post-war scenarios, and perhaps interesting ideas on alternative history if appropriate. And the current scenarios going on are Northwind, the Battle of Al Alamein, and the Battle of Vertepsk. Now you're probably saying, oh man, this looks all great or terrible, but how do I play it? Well, I'm not going to tell you how to play it. I'm actually going to link you to some very useful videos that Gaijin made. The first one is for combat troops, as they put it, but that's essentially lower ranking squadron members and those who do not belong to a squadron yet, as you don't actually need to be in a squadron to participate in world war mode. The other video 
is for the higher ranking members of squadrons. And it covers things like how to control stuff on the battlefield and arm your troops and all that. And honestly, I would suggest that regardless of where you stand in this, you watch both of the videos so you get an understanding of how the whole game mode is supposed to work. Those will be linked in the corner. With the announcement of World War Mode, a lot of criticism has also surfaced, as there's a lot of aspects of the game mode that people are very unhappy with. The most prevalent being that there are markers for enemy tanks, making it impossible to ambush enemy vehicles. It's kind of a mix between RB and Arcade. Now, I don't like Arcade tanks heavily because of the markers. There's a few other reasons, but being able to see where all your enemies are and knowing that the enemies can see where you are kills a lot of the gameplay. And essentially, you can just point across the map because you know where they are. There are a few other gameplay mechanics they have changed, like spags have lead indicators for aircraft. But another large complaint that people had is that the rewards for the game mode were terrible. However, those have already started to be corrected. For reward for your first victory, you get a box that has the ability to get you a talisman, although I doubt it's very likely. Or a modification, which I also doubt is very likely. A random wager, random order, and a booster. And if you are able to get three victories, you can get the same things again or some backups. So don't get your hopes up to get a talisman or a free modification. Although being able to spin the wheel two times a day isn't too bad. I think I'll have to wait till the game mode comes out to really get an opinion on it. And before we drop the topic, on the announcement logo, among all the other various vehicles that are in game, there's also a very large vessel. Now people discussing this got into a debate whether it's the Admiral Hipper or the Bismarck. And after staring at some 3D models of those other vessels, I can confirm it is indeed the Bismarck. Or maybe the Tirpitz. You can tell because the lack of AA guns on the bow, the anchor at the very tip of the bow, the size of the guns, and the number of little cross sections on the antenna things. I don't know what they're called. In the comment section of the World War Mode Q&A, Lewis stated, and the squadron vehicles, when will they be in the game? And Sim 10 AP replied with, right now there are some technical issues with that mechanic, so no ETA for the moment. This is very unfortunate. Later down it, someone remarked, Gaijin forgot that one. However, Moder replied with, trust me when I tell you that we have a squadron full of moderators that are eagerly awaiting them too. Since we talked to the devs directly, we are not going to let them forget. And now for some minor news. First off, if you happen to live in Russia and love cheeseburger pizza, you can order one from Dodo Pizza and get a free T26E as a gift. Along with that, you get a day of premium and a Dodo Bird decal. A very strange promotion, although I think the strangest part is that you have to order cheeseburger pizza, which looks to have pickles and stuff on it. Why don't get you Russians? Although at least it's not pineapples, damn Canadians. And while we're on the Russian side of the War Thunder website, you'll notice that the background is different than it is for the US. It has a Tunguska murdering some aircraft with some T-80Us, while the US side has T-2s flying by. And an update on the story about demonetization that I covered last week, Dita seems to have gotten his monetization back, at least according to him, so that's good to hear. So anyways, if you have any comments, concerns, or questions, you can hit me up down below or my Discord. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I make War Thunder weekly news videos every weekend. I make random videos throughout the week. I like to stream on Saturdays. I'm starting to stream on Twitch a bit more. So hit that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload anything. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. As bonus news, somebody dug up that there is apparently a universal carrier in the files, although it's a low resolution for air battles. I was pretty sure it was my mod the CT who dug it up first, or at least this time around. Though somebody else posted it to Reddit, you get all them Reddit points.